KwaZulu-Natal and on behalf of the African Ombudsman Research Center that we invite you to participate in this webinar entitled Celebrating Women Ombudsman. This webinar today is one of the series organized by the African Ombudsman Research Center um, in celebration of Women's Month in South Africa. But today's discussion specifically is addressing challenges faced by women's ombudsmen, particularly in a patriarchal African society on our continent. Um, what we're very keen to learn and to discuss is how women ombudsmen can make a difference, particularly in the lives of the poor and the marginalized, who constitute the majority of our population groups um, on the continent. Through this webinar, we're hoping to generate practical suggestions and strategies um, to build within our community of practice on the continent how we can overcome challenges faced by women om ombudsmen and mediators. Um, because key to this discussion and key to the solution to these challenges is an understanding is how best we can make skills and strengths that women ombudsmen are able to offer and the positive impact that women ombudsmen and women mediators bring to their work. You may be wondering why is this issue of gender inclusiveness or the particular challenges or barriers to women's om woman, woman ombudsman, why is, why is this an important issue? Um, apart from the fact that it's, this, it's Women's Month in South Africa, why is this a critical issue? Why should we be interested or concerned about this set of issues? Peace building studies reveal that women's participation in conflict prevention, conflict resolution, can improve outcomes, um, both before, during, and after conflict. However, in patriarchal societies, what we typically find is local resistance to the inclusion of women and the inclusion of gender diverse stakeholders in these dispute resolution processes, in mediation processes. And as a result, these stakeholders, women and diverse gender stakeholders, effective participation in those processes is limited as a result. Now, when we go to our gender mainstreaming theory, it clearly indicates the dangers of a gender blind approach to development. So when we don't strive to address these gendered barriers, and when we don't seek gender inclusive processes, what is the outcome of that? Is we perpetuating women's inequality, we perpetuating women's exclusion from decision making processes but of critical impact on the processes that we're facilitating as mediators, as ombudsmen, um, is that our results from these processes are unsustainable. That the strategies that we develop um, and the resolution to conflict and dispute does not respond to the interests and the needs of poor women um, who are the majority population group in our countries. So adopting a gender inclusive approach to mediation and to conflict resolution enhances the robustness of the mediation process, enhances the robustness of dispute resolution. It ensures that the process outcomes are responsible and it ensures that they're sustainable. And it also guarantees then, or better guarantees the effective implementation of the resulting in agreement and the positive impact of that mediation or dispute resolution agreement on poor and marginalized communities. So this is not an issue about being nice to women or feeling sorry for women because they can't participate or aren't received um, in, in the same way that men are in these processes. What our studies and what the literature tells us is that unless we do address these barriers and unless we do adopt approaches that ensure a gender inclusive approach, we are not going to get the outcomes um, to development and to conflict resolution that we're seeking. What I've asked the AORC team to share with the mediators and the ombudsman um, in this network is a very useful and practical tool developed by the ombudsman unit at the World Bank Group. And there's a unit called the Compliance Advisor Ombudsman, um, working with the World Bank Group in countries that form part um, of the World Bank Group. They have developed a gender guidance note and the link is gonna be put up on the chat um, for everyone to access. Um, and it speaks to some of the challenges that may be experienced. What are the challenges and barriers in, a gender, in adopting a gender inclusive approach to mediation? And I just want to offer really just in closing of my remarks, um, three or four of the challenges um, that are generated in this tool, um, as well as the sets, you know, the tool puts forward strategies and, and tools that can be used to address these challenges. 
Um, I'm hoping, well, I'm assuming that these challenges may resonate with women ombudsmen and mediators on our continent. So, for instance, key challenges that have been put forward in this gender practice note is the issue of cultural stereotypes and religious and patriarchal justifications that are used by parties to argue for the exclusion of women. So on the basis of these stereotypes and this justification, um, we see women marginalized from community dialogue and community consultative processes. And their particular vulnerabilities and needs and interests relating to that matter are minimized. Um, equally, we find in many instances that women where women are participants in those mediation and dispute processes, they are not in a position to prioritize and speak up about issues of women's representation and women's participation because of the power imbalance and power inequality um, impacting on their ability to participate in a robust ma manner. Um, we also find in instances that we have nominal women's representation. So powerful women um, and patriarchal women may be nominated to participate in a process as the kind of tick box for, well, look, women are involved in this, this discussion. And it is hard then for mediators to challenge that nom nominal woman's representation um, because that ignores the fact that not all women have the same views and those processes can be dominated by powerful and elite women leaders without tapping into the, the critical issues impacting on the majority women. Um, and quite often mediators um, who are aspiring to be sensitive to local dynamics and to the local context, inadvertently may be perpetuating and reinforcing those existing um, gendered power imbalances. Um, so it is within the community of practice of mediators, it is recognized um, that we often do not have the skills or the power or the tools to be able to mitigate and address the kinds of challenges that impact on our process and therefore impact on the outcome of the process, which is predominantly going to impact on poor um, and marginalized women's groups. So I share the tool um, with this network and team. Um, as I say, it does have very practical strategies um, and tools that can be used to guide in these processes. Um, I also find, it, uh, find some comfort that we're not alone on the African continent in addressing patriarchal resistance um, to women's inclusion and women's leadership in these matters. Um, and we therefore welcome our honorable speakers today um, who are going to be sharing their insights into the particular challenges confronted by women's ombudsmen and their strategies and recommendations on how these best can be addressed so that we can impact positively on poor and marginalized communities. So it is with great pleasure then that I now hand over to South Africa's Deputy Public Protector, Advocate Kollega Toleka, who is our facilitator for today. So DPP, over to you. Thank you, Janine. Good morning. Bom dia to all our participants this morning. Janine has already acknowledged the entire protocol that is a part of our webinar this morning. I shall acknowledge accordingly. I will not go through each and every one in the interest of time. And thank you, Janine, for the warm welcome to all of us on this platform today as we really engage on the issues that are bread and butter issues when it comes to women emancipation and the role that the ombudsman plays in that respect. Indeed, as women in the ombuds family, we can only stand upon the shoulders of those before us. The likes of Justice Florence Mumba, Africa's first female ombudsman, and many others after her. We need to continue to carry the baton with utmost integrity, resilience, persistence and discipline as they did to pave the way for generations of women ombudsmen to come after us. Colleagues, this morning I shall introduce to you our program as we go along. Uh, during this Women's Month, uh, the AOC team has really put together quite an informative program. I, this morning's proceedings with have already started with Janine having done the welcome address, myself the introduction of the program. We will thereafter have a speaker, Honorable Martha Chisuma, 
Ombudsman Malawi, who will give us a presentation for about 25 minutes. Thereafter, we will have the second and last speaker, Honorable Antonia Flobella Rocher Arojo, the Deputy Ombudsman of Angola. And then we'll have the questions and answer sessions for about 32 minutes. Now, if you would please take careful note that for the question and answer session, we will not be taking verbal contributions. However, in the middle of the screen, there is a Q&A icon. Would you kindly post your questions on that icon or any comments in respect of what the speakers would have deliberated on? The chat icon is only to introduce yourself if you wish to and just a general comment. However, for comments that would be read out by myself during this session must please be posted on the question and answer session. And to the panelists, please, if you are not speaking, Please continue. Can you hear me? Thank you. And to the panelists, please, if you are not speaking, please um, keep the mic on mute so that we do not have any um, interruptions. This morning's topic is really based and centered around challenges faced by women ombudsmen in a patriarchal African society and how they can make a difference in the lives of the poor and the marginalized. Many even have questioned around why is it referred to as ombudsmen rather than ombudspersons. However, we know that we had stolen the word from the Swedish which actually means persons, unlike in English, where it actually means men in terms of gender. However, our focus really should not be by the threat of the word, but it should be at the task at hand for us to play our role in emancipating women of the most marginalized. I am delighted to then take this opportunity to introduce our first speaker for this morning, Honorable Martha Chizuma, Ombudsman Malawi. She holds a master in laws. She was appointed as Ombudsman on the 1st of December, 2015. She holds many accolades to her name, which includes that of a commissioner of Malawi, Human Rights Commission, a commissioner of Malawi, Police Service Commission, and an inspector of prisons. She has cut her teeth in both the private and public sectors in Malawi. She serves on the board of the International Ombudsman Institute as a director of the African Regional and Treasurer of IOMA, amongst others. Over to you, Honorable Martha. Uh, thank you very much, DPP, for, for that kind um, uh, introduction. And, um, I welcome you all, uh, all the participants, to, to this webinar. And I would like to thank IOC for, for organizing this as part of the celebrations of the Women's, Women's Month. So let me start by acknowledging that um, due to the massive, I think, gender equality campaigns that have been going on across the world, leadership across the world including Africa is fast changing with the representation of women at various uh, strata of leadership uh, substantially increasing. We are seeing many women now holding very senior um, corporate positions, but also very senior public positions. Uh, like in Malawi here, we've since had at least a woman um, for, for a president. So that wave hasn't spared uh, the Ombudsman institutions. Uh, we are seeing more and more women taking leading roles uh, in the Ombudsman uh, institutions, holding the position of the Ombudsman itself. Last year, we had the, the 
um, first ever Ombudsman Expo uh, in Nigeria, Abuja, where we learned it was actually a shock to me, but a very good shock that since the Ombudsman Institution uh, was established in, in, across the world, we've had more than 350 uh, women Ombudsman. And today in Africa, whilst from what I heard from one of the senior uh, ombudsman, uh, the public protector Zambia, that the ombudsman institution in Africa used to be more of a gentleman's club. We are seeing that there are a number of women ombudsmen that um, have come on the scene. And as I'm talking now, there are 10 out of 46 uh, national ombudsman institutions. 10 of them are women. And I think we need to acknowledge that in our own regional body, IOMA, we have the, 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 the three uh, positions are being held by women. The president is a woman, the secretary general is a woman, and the treasurer is a woman. So there are really some positive uh, changes or positive movement uh, across the world at the, at, 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 within the ombudsman institutions, but also in Africa. However, um, with changes comes resistance, um, with changes come so all sorts of challenges for different people at different positions. And as women ombudsman, like in every, uh, any other positions um, of power, be it political, be it business, be it judiciary, um, we face a lot of challenges. And the biggest challenge we are facing in most decision-making positions across the continent have common roots um, uh, into uh, common roots of patriarchy. Okay, so how does patriarchy, uh, how do patri patriarchal societies portray women? As we all know, in patriarchal societies, women are supposed to be weak, women are subservient, women are inferior, women are secondary, women are less intelligent, incompetent. And most importantly, women cannot be leaders. No, can a woman hold any decision-making position. And this has unfortunately convinced people that a strong and intelligent woman represents a problem and a disruption in social order, rather than being viewed as, a, as, as, a, as a, an important prayer partner or an ally. And this in general deprives women of the power to influence functions, processes, policies and attitudes in society. Now, the situation is double now. Um, it's even worse for women ombudsman because our, our job really is to hold people account, is to make power of people, those people in power positions to account for their actions or uh, omissions. So it's, it, it gets even more complicated um, for, for women ombudsman because other than just simply dealing with those attitudes, your job really, your bread and butter becomes, is, is one that you have to hold power of people um, accountable. So what are the challenges? So there are a number of challenges that we get as women ombudsman, um, which, are, which apply to other, of course, women, but I think for us, there are a number of them that are more specific. The first one is uh, balancing work life. In most of our African cultures, women, regardless of their status, professions are responsible for dem domestic duties such as household calls, bearing and raising children, caring for the sick, etc., etc. With the changes in recent times, we are no longer confined to these domestic roles as we are increasingly joining the workforce and taking up space in positions of power and influence. However, this also brings um, many challenges in our attempts to achieve work-life balance. Despite our demanding public positions, we are still expected to perform certain roles arising from our religious and cultural obligations associated with our gender. Uh, this can give rise to a conflict between our work and our traditional roles in family and community. And for me, I think this, this hits home personally because when I was appointed ombudsman in 2015, I was a few weeks pregnant. And so there I was having to settle in this demanding job, um, at the same time having to do with everything that is associated with early pregnancy. 
And I also remember that two weeks after my baby was born, there was this prearranged conference, which my office was co-hosting with the University of Malawi. And I simply had to be a speaker. So I had a two year, two weeks old baby, and we are at this hotel where they had to arrange a room for me, where every now and then I had to go and feed the baby. Whilst at the same time, I'm also attending to the, to the conference. And later on, after, after the baby was about a few months old, I had to travel across the world with a baby and a nanny, uh, attending ombudsman conferences. And that's not easy. That's not easy at all. But that's what the society is expecting you to be, to be the mother, to be the woman, to be the caretaker. Just a few weeks ago, uh, rather a month ago or so, uh, I had to take my mother to the hospital and I had a meeting here, which was supposed to start at 10. I thought that by 9 I'll be done. But there I was at the hospital. The hospital on that day was just very slow. I finished whatever I was doing there at around 10 to 10. I literally had to fly from the clinic coming this way and I had not taken my handbag. I was still in flip-flops. So I walked into a meeting with, with, with flip-flops on me with no handbag and nothing. The, the, the good part is that all the people that I had to attend to were women and when I explained, they understood. But I can only imagine if that meeting was male-dominated. So the thing is that the challenge of balancing work-life is never um, an easy one. It's never an easy one. But we know that for us to get here to these positions hasn't been easy at all. So we, to get where we are now already has not been an easy journey as such balancing our two roles is only a continuation of that not so easy journey. There can, ne there can never be a perfect balance where these two roles are at 50-50. We can only strive uh, to give our best to both. I'll give time to my kids, I'll give time to my family, I'll give time to my community, and at the same time, I'll fight for justice for the poor and the marginalized according to what the law mandates me to do. There's no compromising, but only giving the best to both roles. Another challenge that we face is the gender stereotype and attitudes, which um, uh, the DPP uh, alluded to uh, briefly in her opening remarks. Uh, much of our fight to success as women ombudsman lies in the fight against attitudes and stereotypes that come with patriarchy. The unfortunate truth about this is that both men and women are responsible for these attitudes and stereotypes towards other women in decision-making decision, in decision -making positions. And that's how deeply ingrained patriarchy is in, our, in, in the society's questions. With the progress made in, in, in fighting for women's rights, both in the public and private spheres, much of these attitudes are no longer portrayed openly or explicitly. They are no longer in most of the laws. You remember the, the previous laws used to, we are not very women friendly. They are no longer in the bias policies, no regulations. Most of the legal documents are now against these attitudes and have outlawed them. But now you'll find that the patriarchal attitudes visible in how these new laws are being used or not being used. The directives uh, given by the ombudsman are binding in most jurisdictions. But you find that there's usually an irresponsiveness in complying with these directives and remedies. Granted, there are so many reasons for this, but some of the unresponsiveness is due to the fact that the directives are coming from a woman. The attitude of, I cannot be told what to do by a woman. Therefore, since I cannot say out loud, I, can, I will just not comply. As women ombudsman, we may not be taken seriously as we discharge our functions of investigation. Much as the main aim of carrying out an investigation is to accumulate as much evidence and information as possible, Officials may be forthcoming with information, not necessarily because they want you to use it, but because they are convinced that because you're a woman, you will not use it anyway. And always a pushback follows when a report or a determination or directive is, is issued. And I personally can testify to that. Uh, the very first ever systemic investigation that I carried out as ombudsman, you had all these government institutions offering offering, um, I mean, offering 
uh, documentation that or evidence that I had requested for. But after the report was released and there are some things that they had to implement, the kind of pushback that I got was simply out of this world. And then there are times when it is those subtle more comments made in speeches, discussions, whether formal or casual, by other male leaders, political leaders, or other decision-making uh, positions, which are meant as a joke or otherwise, but that undermine or belittles us for being women in this position. Moreover, there is also a belief that if you are successful as a woman, if you are successful as an ombudsman, as a public officer, it is not necessarily on, based on merit, um, but rather it, it is prob probably as a result of you having given some favors uh, to be granted the same for men. I've been shocked recently um, uh, to hear some narrative from very senior public Or government officials because they simply perform and perform well. Now, how do we change the attitudes? How do we level for values uh, reinforced in societies who continuously refuse to believe that a woman can take charge of affairs and is capable of making decisions that are binding to everyone? Women ombudsmen have a chance to bring about change through actively identifying and utilizing unique opportunities, pathways to becoming a more efficient and effective ombudsman. We do not have to go radical um, in finding these opportunities. We just have to take advantage of those already existing aspects of our societies and tailor or adjust them to our needs. So the first thing that I would like to talk about in trying to uh, level this playing field is redefining the exercise of power. In most jurisdiction, I know for Malawi for sure, uh, the Ombudsman institution is of constitutional status. And I know that's the truth for most African um, Ombudsman institution. It's of constitutional status, meaning that it's a very powerful institution. Okay. Now, essentially power is defined as the capacity to effect um, action, whether by others or by oneself. The conventional theory of power is seeing power as a question of domination, where one person exercises power over the other when the former acts contrary to the latter's interest. But the other side of power, which I believe sits so well with the Ombudsman institution, is to see power, uh, uh, is, to be, is to see power as a way of changing the wishes of others not necessarily through domination, but by influencing them to act in your interest, in their interest or that of the next, uh, next person. It's the capacity to produce a change whilst enhancing rather than diminishing the power of any involved actors. And that's something that I believe as a woman we bring to the table, as women ombudsman we bring to the table that may not be easy for men because as as women we are the home builders we are the society makers our nature really instinctively um, we are there to nature not to break so in the exercise of power that is something that is in, in, within us that we can use to ensure that we are effective in a more distinctive manner that fits into the ombudsman uh, concept and ultimately be more effective um, than, 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 than the rest. So as women ombudsman, we are not trying to change the power dynamics within our society by replacing patriarchy with matriarchy. Our goal is simply to level the playing field by influencing change through 
uh, a change in attitudes against women and the marginalized, thereby bringing about empowerment and a more trans transformative participation using the softer power, the more feminine uh, power that is uh, in, in us. We do not have to see men as enemy, but as equal partners in this quest for justice to the vulnerable. Another um, thing that I think we need to consider if we are to level the playing field and be more effective for the poor and the vulnerable is to be bold and add value and be authentic, be an authentic human being. To fill a traditionally male-dominated role is obviously challenging for a woman. Failure in those roles is always the expectation by the society. The much-needed support from men to women in such roles rarely comes unless we show our value. Discharging the mandate of the ombudsman in such society as ours needs us to push the boundaries of our new roles as well as those of our gender by utilizing our strength and leadership qualities in skills, knowledge, experience, and emotion. We should pursue the things within our mandate that we want and not waiting for them to come to us. We need to create space because nobody really gives you space. It's about you creating your own space uh, and, 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 and occupy it. So the key is to be confident in our resources and abilities and not just uh, those represented on paper. Demonstrating your ability to lead the institution to perform your role and not playing the good girl always changes the way you are viewed and automatically commands respect and cooperation. And if you command that, it means that your work will also be recognized. People will start giving more attention to, to what you're doing. Um, another thing that uh, I thought that is also important and that has been quite uh, real uh, in as far as my, me being a ombudsman is concerned is to be a woman, embracing being a woman. Okay. The presence of a woman ombudsman in pursuing justice for the marginalized is a powerful message of empowerment for women, especially when they are facing patriarchal attitudes in their communities. And if the same, and if the same is removing their voices to speak out. People who are silenced by negative casual norms may develop some trust in the woman ombudsman than the normal um, conventional uh, modes of settling disputes like the courts. Something I've seen over and over is that women in power bring a different perspective, and I think I've already alluded to this, an essential perspective in decision making and policy making. Such a presence of a female ombudsman can be that encouragement that they need to stand up against the injustices that they are facing in their communities. I've seen this over and over again. One of the uh, usual cases, some of the usual cases that we get here uh, in the office of the Ombudsman would be of teachers uh, claiming, this would be primary school teachers, claiming unfair dismissals um, after probably they have been found to have uh, conducted themselves immorally with uh, a, a, school, a school pupil. So I remember we, we, we usually get the cases um, as, as, as the claim would come as unfair dismissal after they've been dismissed by the Minister of Education. And usually why they'll be dismissed by the Minister of Education and not be in prison is because usually when the matter goes before the criminal courts, before the magistrate, I mean the rape, the rape or the defilement charge, there usually is not much evidence um, which the magistrate can use or because of the patriarchal attitudes uh, of the magistrates within these local courts, you find that they don't find enough evidence or they don't get convinced with the evidence that has been presented before them to find that uh, there was a rape or there was some immorality that happened. And because of that, you find that after they've been dismissed by the Minister of Education, they would come to court saying, I mean, they would come to my office saying, the court acquitted me of the criminal charge, of the rape charge. So I was unfairly dismissed. So we've had a lot of those kind of cases coming. And I remember one case that stands out to me is where the magistrate, I was reading the magistrate where the 
he, he acquitted one of these teachers where he's saying, who doesn't know that women, so I think the magistrate was simply trying to say that there was no rape, but there was consensual sex. So this is a, a headmaster of the school and a grade, uh, a grade five uh, pupil. So the, head, uh, the magistrate was like, there cannot have been rape because who doesn't know that women don't say yes um, at once, but that if you keep on nudging them, then eventually you find that they are responding positively. So it was on that basis that the magistrate acquitted this issue. So there I was looking at this matter and hearing this headmaster, um, uh, hearing this master uh, explaining that he was unfairly dismissed because the magistrate found him not guilty. And at that moment, probably I had to go beyond just being an ombudsman, but also being a woman, knowing how um, sexual harassment um, affect a, a woman or rather how sexual harassment operates in the rural world. Because I could actually see that the magistrate was simply being patriarchal or being sarcastic, but in a very dangerous way, uh, resulting in, a, in an acquittal that shouldn't have been an acquittal. So at that moment is where I simply had to be more than an ombudsman, but being a woman as well, and put the record straight that what happened here was wrong. You don't acquit, uh, 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 you don't acquit just based on the fact that you believe a woman says, yes, I mean, no consent is no consent. If you haven't given a consent at once, there's no consent. And come on now, we are talking about a standard five, uh, uh, a grade five a pupil here. So we need to impress that womanhood because the empathy that we bring to cases like those uh, makes a whole lot of a difference for, for, for people, uh, for marginalized people or people without a voice because <clears throat> unless we do that, because I remember that out of this case, then we came up with a program within the office where whenever we go to, to do our interaction with the public officers in the districts, in the, in the provinces, this would be something that we would always speak out about. We we'll always talk about this and discuss with them on strategies on how we can actually put an end um, uh, to, to, to this evil. So we need to embrace our womanhood. It's something that is a strength and not a weakness. And it does not mean hysteria. It simply means bringing a different perspective to the issues uh, so that they can be properly handled. Another thing that I've seen working here is um, how we can use the media as women ombudsman to, to highlight the work that we are doing. You know, the media can either be our friend or, or foe. Um, as a woman ombudsman, we are in public eye and the, and the media will first judge us as a woman. And we all know how that usually goes. The media can either take us down or take us up, but that is also dependent on us. How do we want uh, the media to portray us as a weak and, and incompetent ombudsman because we are women or as a woman ombudsman who is ethical bold, fair, approachable, um, compassionate, empathetic, and an authentic person. Our portrayal in the media can either make or break us, especially in this day and age of social media. But with the media on our side, we can garner for public support and not sympathy as a tool for holding public institutions accountable in their service delivery. And I've seen, I've personally seen this in Malawi, where we've seen how the media has really um, put a very positive light on the work that the Office of the Ombudsman has done to an extent that um, we become some sort of an authority on most of the issues um, that are happening in the country. And, and actually also that puts a burden that we cannot just go out there and talk rubbish. So for us, I think, to this date, I, I can safely say that the media has been an ally, um, and it's not just because I'm a woman, but because the office itself um, is being effective. So in conclusion, uh, all I can say is that the job of ombudsman is not so easy. It's tough actually, but for us as women ombudsman, it's dub or tough. 
because of the context within which we find ourselves operating in. But within the same context, there are opportunities which we can use um, to our advantage to make things work and work brilliantly uh, for us and therefore for the people that we serve, most of them uh, are the lowest strata of the social ladder, that's the vulnerable uh, and they are marginalized. There's a certain flavor that a woman ombudsman brings to the table, the compassion um, and, the, um, and, the, and the emotions that we have uh, that make our institutions to be more effective and impactful in dealing with the injustices uh, that are reported to us. Yes, patriarchy is there, but I think we are much stronger than that. Um, as the saying goes, a woman is like a tea bag. You only know how strong she is when in hot water. So the patriarchy here is our hot water, but we are just stronger. Uh, we can do this job. The vulnerable and the marginalized uh, depend on us. So we didn't have got no choice but to toughen it up. So let's do this. Um, thank you very much for your attention and happy Women's Month, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Martha Chizuma. Thank you so much for the wisdom, the inspiring scenarios that really gave us an insight of where we are coming from, where we are at, and which direction we should actually move to as women, and our strengths as women ombudsmen to the society that we deem to serve. Indeed, we have seen it in many countries across Africa, including ours in South Africa, that when a woman ombudsman shakes the system, that is mainly led by men, it is regarded as destruction. In fact, the challenge becomes that woman who is leading that particular institution. We must also acknowledge the strides that have been won. Firstly, by having the woman ombudsman, but you beautifully outline the progressive laws that we have as African countries and throughout the world. But the barrier still remains that mostly it is the men who control the systems that must implement those legislations and in, in the respective policies and other laws. So our role, as you have said, is that we need to unlock that. We need to use our diversity, we need to use our different touch of compassion to unlock those barriers, identify and highlight those gaps. And most importantly, you've highlighted how we should use the media mainstream for the work that we are doing in promotion of the grassroots, especially the women to whom services are really not directed to emancipate them. Thank you so much. I would also like now to introduce our second speaker, Honorable Antonia Robella Rocha, the Deputy Ombudsman of Angola. She holds a Master in Law degree. She's the second Deputy Ombudsman of Angola since the 19th of January, 2018. She has cut her teeth in teaching and currently Associate Professor of the Higher Education, Universidad Losada de Angola, and has held several senior positions in the Angolan government, including in the presidency, the highest office of the land. She is also currently a member of the Superior Council of, of the Judiciary. Over to you, Madam. Please press the unmute button, madam. We cannot hear you. You are muted. 
Thank you. Excelência, Senhora Provedora de Justiça do Malau, Doutora Marta Xizuma, Ilustre Preletora. Excelência, Madame Marta Xizuma, Ombudsman of the Republic of Malau. Excelência, Senhora Provedora de Justiça, Adjunta da África do Sul, Doutora Coleca Caleca, Ilustre Liberadora. Excelência, Deputy Public Protector of South Africa, Doutora Coleca. Excelência, Senhora Doutora Janice Ix, professora da Escola de Direito e Mestre de Cerimônia. Excelência, uh, Janine Ix, uh, from the Faculty of Law in the University of Kazoo Natal. Excelência, Senhoras Provedoras de Justiça e Adjuntas participam deste fórum. Uh, Excelência, Deputy Ombudsman, that participate in this seminar. Minhas senhoras e senhores responsáveis pelo Centro de Pesquisa de Produtos de Justiça e Mediadores Africanos da ORCO. Ladies and gentlemen, responsible for the AORC Research Center. Caros participantes. Dear participants. Inicio por agradecer em nome da Provedoria de Justiça de Angola. I start by thanking, thanking you in the name of the Ombudsman Institution of the Republic of Angola. Pelo convite que formulado para participar deste evento, onde vamos abordar um tema de inestimável importância. For the invitation formulated where we are going to para a nossa sociedade, film, very important for our society, para o mundo em geral, uh, and for the world in general, e para os africanos em especial, especially for the Africans. No momento que se pretende cada vez mais assegurar a igualdade do género, in times where we intend to secure the uh, the rights, the equality rights, o empoderamento da mulher and the empowerment of women, o combate à pobreza na nossa sociedade and the fight against poverty in our societies. E com certeza este fórum constitui um avanço significativo and this forum will Certainly, develop para continuar a luta pela defesa dos direitos, liberdades e garantias de todo cidadão. Processes that will uh, enhance the struggle against the unfairness, em especial das mulheres, idosos e crianças. Uh, Statistics to fight injustices against women and elderly in our a, society. A palestra que vou proferir tem por objeto dar a conhecer o papel da Procuradoria de Justiça adjunta de Angola na defesa dos direitos, liberdades e garantia do cidadão. Uh, my, my theme is around defending the rights of the people and the citizens in Angola. Em diferentes contextos e setores da vida pública e social. In different contexts of the public life and social life. Bem como fortalecer a colaboração entre o Provedor de Justiça de Angola e outras instituições do Estado and also the strengthening of the relationship between the ombudsman and other state entities. Alargar o conhecimento público, em particular da sociedade civil. And broaden the knowledge of the uh, society. No sentido de passar a discutir os desafios de ser uma mulher numa sociedade patriarcal. Uh, in the sense that we Uh, inform about the challenges of a woman in a patriarchal society. Africana e como as mulheres podem fazer a diferença na vida dos povos e desfavorecidos. And how the woman can make a difference in the lives of the poor and marginalized. O texto que elaborei incide em quatro pontos. The text that I have uh, elaborated has four points. Nomeadamente, breves noções sobre o sistema patriarcal africano. Uh, namely, uh, short, uh, short introduction to the patriarchal uh, society in Os Africa. Os desafios de ser uma mulher um bundesman numa sociedade patriarcal. And the challenges of being an bundesman in a patriarchal society. Enquanto provedora de justiça adjunta, As, an ombuds, as a deputy ombudswoman. Como as mulheres ombudsmen podem fazer a diferença na vida das classes favorecidas? And how 
the deputy ombudswoman uh, or ombudswoman can make a difference in the lives of those disadvantaged groups. Os mecanismos legais de defesa dos direitos dos cidadãos em Angola com o Estado Democrático de Direito. And also about the mechanisms of a democratic state uh, as our society in Angola. E por último, apresento breves conclusões e sugestões. And lastly, I will present some suggestions and conclusions. Sobre as breves noções sobre o sistema patriarcal africano. About a short uh, notions of a patriarchal, African patriarchal society. Não vou me referir a tudo que consta do meu texto. I am not going to elaborate everything within my uh, text. Porque julgo serem questões de cultura geral. Uh, as I think it is a matter of general knowledge. E como o tempo é curto. And once the, the, the time is not in our favor. Vamos dedicar mais a parte referente à defesa do direito das mulheres, crianças e classes desfavorecidas. I will focus on the defense of rights of women, children and disadvantaged groups. O papel da mulher como ombudsman em Angola. The role of women as ombudsman in Angola. O papel do provedor e a colaboração com os diversos órgãos do, do Estado. And the collaboration between the ombudsman and the different uh, organs of the state. E qual a posição que as mulheres provedoras de justiça de Angola e de África, no geral, devem ter para mudar este clima de desigualdade do género, de violência doméstica e para o combate à pobreza? And what position should the ombudsman take to fight against the inequalities and injustices against the vulnerable and uh, disadvantaged groups? Sabemos que o patriarcado não significa o poder do pai. We know that patriarchal does not necessarily mean the power of a father. Mas o poder masculino centrado na figura do homem. But it is about the, the male power that is centered in the male figure. Uma forma de organização social onde as suas relações são regidas pelos dois princípios basilares. It is a form of social organ organization where its principles are based on two pillars. O princípio da subordinação se reflete nas, nas mulheres serem hierarquicamente subordinadas dos homens the principle that is reflected upon a woman that has, be, has to be submissive to, to men. E o jovem está subordinado hierarquicamente aos homens mais velhos patriarcas da comunidade. And the young ones who should be submissive to the older patriarchal men. Já sabemos que esta fase funcionou mais no período da idade antiga e da idade média. We know that this stage has uh, has been in place in uh, olden times. Em Angola, o patriarcado vigorou com predominância no século passado. Uh, in Angola, the patriarchal has predominantly uh, remained up until the last century. Hoje ainda se faz sentir nas regiões suburbanas, em especial nos municípios distantes das cidades. Uh, in our days, we still, uh, we are still able to to feel the presence of patriarchal porque, in, within the provinces. Porque à medida que os homens foram evoluindo e foi sendo aprovada a legislação a nível interno e internacional, foram ganhando consciência. As, as we see that as the men has developed, we, we can see that uh, there is a level of consciousness. A força do patriarcado em Angola, em algumas regiões, uh, the strength of patriarchal in Angola in certain regions obrigava que as mulheres quando os esposos morressem or forced the, the woman uh, when the husband would die deviam casar com os irmãos do falecido they should marry the, the deceased brother chamado liberato he, he would be called liberato ou mesmo o patriarca que decidia tudo sobre a escolha do homem para casar com as filhas. Or even a certain patriarch would choose who, who should marry the daughters. Algo que hoje já não se vê. Something that in our days is no longer in place. Ou muito raro. Or it is very rare. Quanto aos desafios de ser uma mulher um bom numa sociedade patriarcal? With regards to the challenges about 
being a, a lady on goods men in a patriarchal society. Começo por dizer que o género é um fator importante como a manifestação da dignidade da pessoa humana. I start by saying that the, uh, the ladies are a very important factor in a developing society. Tendo em conta que a desigualdade de género que ainda assistimos são uma fonte de risco e vulnerabilidade. And we have also to see that uh, the inequalities it is a form of evil that has to be put away. As mulheres portadoras de justiça e adjunto, por muito que se dediquem, nunca são reconhecidas pelos homens. The lady on goods men, as much as they force themselves, as much as they push themselves, they are not recognized by men, by men. Porque eles não aceitam orientações das mulheres. Because they do not accept uh, orientations, they do not accept uh, being told things being told by a woman. Aliás, mesmo em outras funções, even in other functions, even in other duties. Em 1991, quando assumi pela primeira vez o cargo de diretora do gabinete para as funções do Conselho de Ministros, in 1991, when I took the charge as a director in the ministers' board, o gabinete tinha maioria de homens. The office was majoritarily uh, frequented by men. Comecei por de dar a conhecer qual, qual os direitos e deveres de cada um. And I started off by telling everyone what they have to do. E o regime disciplinar dos funcionários públicos. And disciplinary code of the public servant. Não gostaram nada. They did not like that. Começaram a frenar o trabalho. Then they started to uh, Chamavam-me comandante. They would call me comandante. Mas, aos poucos, fui apresentando o trabalho. But along of days, uh, I started showing, off, showing work. Modificando algumas condutas de indisciplina. And changed some uh, disciplinary conduct. Houve um jovem que pediu transferência. Uh, I remember there was a young man that requested to be transferred. Foi fazer mestrado. He went to do a master's degree. Porque dizia que não podia ser mandado por uma mulher. Because he said he could not be led by a woman. Um grupo fez tudo para chantagear o trabalho. There was a group also that made everything to blackmail all my work. Um dia tinha que apresentar o despacho ao secretário do Conselho de Ministros. At some time I had to be before the, the board of ministers. Tinha pasta no gabinete. I had my archives, e a não aparecia. and the keys would not be seen to the office. Ganhei calma. I had to be calm. E o particular do presidente. And the, the, the president's the general secretary Salvou esta situação. had to intervene. Porque havia um molho de chaves, por sinal havia uma do gabinete. Because they found out that there was a key holders somewhere. Not very well seen. O indivíduo que tinha escondido as chaves. The same person that has hidden the keys. Quando a porta abriu. When, the, when he saw the door open. Não conseguiu esconder a sua luta. He could not hide his sentiment of, uh, of a deceiver. Mas eu aprendi que a, que a luta e a guerra responde-se com o trabalho. But I... Uh, with these regards, I have learned that the fight and the war will respond it with work. E o que eu faço em todo lado. And this is what I do everywhere. Deste modo, as mulheres provedoras de justiça adjuntam. Thus, I would say that the, uh, on boot, the woman ombudsman devem continuar a trabalhar. Should continue to work. E a sensibilizar os homens and also sensibilize that they should also talk to the men que devem garantir o direito das mulheres that they should uh, guarantee the, the rights of the woman as oportunidades and the opportunities a liberdade de florescer como cidadãos de pleno direito and the liberty to grow as a citizen since it is their right que é uma das prioridades mais atuais das políticas de proteção e desenvolvimento social. Since it is one of the most 
visible policies uh, that are being implemented by the state. Todos nós conhecemos os objetivos do desenvolvimento sustentado ODS. We all know about the, uh, the objectives of the sustainable development. Reconhece a igualdade como elemento chave para a redução da desigualdade. That recognizes the equality as a key element de violência do género, of development. da pobreza. That talks about also the domestic violence and uh, poverty. A África, como sabemos, debate-se hoje com muitos desafios. Africa, as we know, has, a, has many challenges. Para a busca de soluções para grande parte destes problemas. Uh, in the search of solutions for these uh, problems. E as mulheres representam em todos os países da África. And the women representing all countries in Africa. O segmento da população maioritária. The large part, the large part of a segment. Mas a nível dos cargos de empoderamento nos órgãos de decisão, a nível local, central, diplomacia, parlamento, tribunais, etc. But in terms of leadership in parliaments, diplomacy, courts uh, and the judiciary, são we, raros os casos em que atingem os 50%. Uh, are very rare the cases where we have a 50% of gender. In, in Angola, in Angola, we have registered a, a few improvements. Temos aproximadamente 39% a nível do parlamento. We have nearly 39% in the parliament. A nível do governo, a nossa cifra baixou. In the government, our scale has come down com o reajustamento do governo depois do Covid. Uh, with the change in the government due to Covid. Temos uma ministra de Estado para a área social. We have a minister of state for social area. Só temos quatro ministros. We only have four lady ministers. Dois secretários de Estado. Two secretaries of state. A nível dos tribunais estamos melhor. In, with regards to the, to the courts, we are much better. Temos uma presidente do Tribunal de Contas. We have a chairperson of the accounts court. E uma vice-presidente. And the deputy chairperson. No Tribunal de Contas. In the accounts court. No Tribunal Constitucional. And in the Constitutional Court. Temos seis juízes conselheiros no Tribunal Constitucional. We have six judge advisors in the Constitutional Court. No Tribunal Supremo também a cifra é pequena. In the Supreme Court, we have a, a slightly less number of females. So there are five women and 16 men. They will find five women and 16 men. Aumentamos as governadoras, só temos três. We have uh, three uh, provincial governors. Quer dizer que ainda temos muito lutar. Uh, this means that we still have a lot, a lot of struggle. Como portadora de justiça adjunta. As a deputy on goods woman. Tem sensibilizado que não basta promover campanhas de erradicação do analfabetismo. I have mentioned that it's not enough to uh, make awareness against the uh, uh, illiteracy. Nem da pobreza. And it's not enough also to make awareness about uh, poverty. Se as entidades elas ligadas não forem persistentes. If the entities related to these sectors are not involved. E se os processos não tiverem sustentabilidade. And if the process are not sustainable. Nas várias parcelas do território nacional. In several segments within uh, the Angolan territory. Continua-se a revelar o papel da mulher. We continue to bring the awareness about the role of a woman. Mas nós mulheres, provedoras de justiça adjunta. But we women deputy ombudsman não podemos esperar we should not wait que os homens coloquem no lugar as mulheres quando elas têm competência that men should put the woman that should be men putting the woman in the places as portadoras de justiça adjunta and the ombudsman woman Devem trabalhar para mudar este quadro com ações de sensibilização. Should 
bring the awareness about these challenges. E recomendações. And uh, make recommendations. Em Angola, a Provedora de Justiça adjunta. In Angola, the Ombudsman. É coadjutora do Provedor de Justiça. Is a helper of the Ombudsman. The Ombudswoman is a helper of the Ombudsman. Que é uma entidade pública independente. Who is an, a public entity independent. Cuja licença se encontra na Constituição. Whose mandate is from the Constitution. No artigo 192. In its article 192. Na lei orgânica do Estatuto do Dor. The bylaws of the uh, Ombudsman. Na lei da Provedora de Justiça. And also his mandate is found in the law of the uh, Ombudsman Institution. O Provedor e o Adjunto são eleitos pela Assembleia Nacional. The Ombudsman and his deputy, they are elected by the National uh, Assembly. Para um mandato de cinco anos, renovável uma só vez. For a mandate of five years, renewable only once. A Provedor de Justiça Adjunta solicita esclarecimentos aos responsáveis dos departamentos ministeriais a nível do Secretário de Estado. The, ombudsman, the Deputy Ombudsman requests information from the Secretary of State and uh, some uh, directors in the ministries. Administradores municipais e comunais. Municipal administrators and communals. Diretores nacionais. The national directors. Ou, ou outras entidades de and, esse nível. And also request information from other entities within that level. Sobre os casos de violação dos direitos, liberdade e garantia do cidadão. About the violation of the rights of the citizens. Que lhes são colocados por queixas ou reclamações. From the cases, from the complaints placed upon the ombudsman. E situações que se verificam nas suas visitas de constatação. And also with regards to the visits that they make. Aos estabelecimentos penitenciários. And those establishments, like the correctional services. Hospitalares. Hospitals. Creches, lares de idosos. Creches. Ou mesmo as audiências que concedem aos cidadãos. And also information uh, acquired from the complainers. E pode fazer recomendações nas ausências de impedimentos do Produto de Justiça. And the deputy ombudswoman also make recommendations in the absence of the ombudsman. Orienta o arquivamento dos processos que não são da competência do Produto de Justiça. He asks uh, ask the, the, the process that are not within the mandate of the ombudsman to be uh, archived. A Provedora de Justiça adjunta como jurista. Uh, the, um, the Deputy Ombudswoman as a, as a lawyer. Pertence a algumas associações que defendem a igualdade de género. She is a member of some uh, organization that defends the gender equality. O empoderamento da mulher. The empowerment of women. O combate à violência doméstica. And the fight against the domestic violence. A erradicação da pobreza. And the eradication of Poverty. She is also a member of the Angolian Lawyers, Association She is also a member of the Ladies Lawyers uh, looking towards the Maritime Law. Organização Marítima Internacional. And she is also a member of the International Organ Maritime Organization. Movimento Nacional de Combate ao Uso das Drogas. She's also a member of the National Movement of Struggle Against the Use of Drugs. E tem se batido abertamente através de palestras, seminários, conferências, visitas e ações que reforçam a necessidade constante de conhecer o verdadeiro papel que a mulher representa na sociedade. She also conducts visits and takes the awareness to, to the public about the duties. Assim como combate à pobreza. She takes awareness about the fight against the poverty. A defesa dos direitos, liberdades e garantias do cidadão. And the struggle against uh, the violation of the rights of the citizens. Em especial as classes mais desfavorecidas. Especially the disadvantaged classes. Antes do aparecimento da pandemia do Covid. Before the coming of Covid-19. Que fez limitar o nosso trabalho. That has limited our duties. Nas visitas de constatação que fizemos. In the visits of uh, the visits that we have made. 
a establecimentos prisionais, lares de idosos, hospitais. To the prisons and correctional service establishments. Apresentamos sugestões ao Corredor de Justiça. We have made suggestions to the Ombudsman. Que remeteu a entidades competentes. Who has also taken to, to, to the account, to the attention of the entities. E ficamos satisfeitos porque houve melhorias em algumas instituições. And we are very satisfied. We are, we are very happy that we see an improvement of, uh, within those establishments. Um hospital pediátrico em Luanda. As the, the children's hospital in Luanda. Que acabou por ser visitado posteriormente pela primeira dama. Who was, after our visit, who was visited by the first lady of the republic. Logo a seguir a nossa visita. Right after the visit of the deputy. Incentivou o presidente a fazer uma obra que aumentou esse, esse hospital. And has is, and has motivated the president e que foi to revamp the whole hospital. Quanto ao lar de idosos de Beiral, and with regards to the homes of the elderly, que também não tinha condições, also was lacking conditions, living conditions. Após a nossa visita, after our visit, posteriormente o governador de Luanda, the governor of Luanda, transferiu os idosos para um outro centro de acolhimento. Transferred the elderly to another, to another center. Nas palestras que referimos a nível interno e internacional, in our road shows and workshops, nas faculdades e outros locais, in universities and many other places, defendemos todas essas situações. We have always defended our position with regards to this. E as áreas prioritárias que eu defendo, como and, a justiça adjunta, and my priority as the ombudswoman, são o combate à pobreza, uh, are uh, the fight against poverty, o incentivo à educação e capacitação de mulheres e crianças, uh, to, uh, or to improve the capacitation and, uh, of education of the youth, o incentivo das mulheres e jovens no poder e na liderança, we also incentivate women to leadership, direitos humanos dos cidadãos, we also work towards the human rights of citizens, direitos das meninas e dos em especial das classes mais desfavorecidas, we also work towards the rights of young girls and uh, of those uh, disadvantaged classes. As mulheres provedoras de justiça podem fazer a diferença na vida dos povos marginalizados. Uh, the ombud, woman ombudsman can make a great difference, difference in the Procurar, lives Procurando sensibilizar of os dirigentes of para respeitar os direitos das classes mais favorecidas. Deputy ombudswoman can make a huge difference in the lives of the poor and the marginalized by uh, requesting the leaders. E como provedor de justiça adjunta, and as an ombudswoman, tem sensibilizado o combate da pobreza. I have brought awareness to struggle against poverty. A criação de estruturas the, como, como hospitais públicos, lares de idosos, habitação condigna para as classes favorecidas. I have also uh, motivated the creation of structures. E medidas de saneamento. Uh, to protect the, the elderly and the, 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 the sick person. Como provedor de justiça adjunta, eu recomendo. As, as ombudsman, as a deputy ombudsman, I would like to recommend. Que as, as provedoras de justiça dos países africanos. That the, ombuds, the, the, the ombudsman in the African countries. Sensibilizem os líderes e os governantes. Motivate the leaders and governance. Para uma maior interligação entre o provedor de justiça e as instituições públicas, privadas, to associações. Promote, to promote a collaboration between the ombudsman and the public entities and the private entities. Para que se possa, de facto, acabar com a desigualdade de gênero. So that it can be used as one of the elements to end the fight, to end inequalities. O combate à pobreza and also poverty, o combate à corrupção, and corruption, a violência doméstica, uh, 
and uh, domestic violence. Tendo em conta que a maior parte dos países da África, como Angola, since major parts of Africa in countries like Angola, aprovaram as convenções das resoluções das Nações Unidas, has approved conventions from the United Nations, da União Africana, from uh, African Union, da SADEC, and from the Southern African countries. Se refere à discriminação, combate à discriminação da mulher, which which makes reference to fight against discrimination uh, of women ou apoio às crianças e idosos and the support to children and the elderly. Em Angola temos muita legislação que protege os direitos in dos Angola, cidadãos. In Angola we have uh, many laws that protect the rights of citizens. A partir da nossa Constituição, right from our constitution que fala, portanto, da, do princípio da igualdade that talks about the principle of equality. e vários projetos de defesa dos direitos da mulher, several projects of the women's rights, da violência doméstica and the violation of, of domestic violence. Muito obrigado a todos. Uh, well, thank you very much to you all. Obrigada pela inspiração. É uma apresentação informativa. Thank you so much. Nota informativa. Foi muito informativa. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, we we need to ensure that we realize the objectives of the different protocols that have been entered into to emancipate women. It is indeed our duty as women's ombudsmen, particularly. É de facto a nossa missão como professora de justiça adjunta. To be vanguards of our constitutions, the legislations, and Temos all policies that protect women. Da nossa constituição. As we have said, we have really reached strides in respect of numbers of women who are in leadership, women ombudsmen, even though it is not enough. However, we need to realize and entrench the authority that comes with the quota. And I think it is our duty as an outline as women ombudsmen to ensure that we entrench that authority, the power of women. We alleviate women of poverty within the society. I will now move over to the question and answer session. I see that there are several comments as well in, in the chat icon. Uh, should there be time, I will just uh, read through them. However, I will start with the question and answer. Uh, there is no specific panel member whom these questions are being asked to. So I will just um, request panel members to note them and I will indicate um, who will assist us with which question. The first question is, is Women Ombudsman International? I would ask Janine to kindly uh, assist us with that question. What are the challenges facing your organization from men? I will ask Honorable Martha to deal with that. As a Women Ombudsman, do you find yourself in a situation where when you have a female complainant, the compulsion to help such a one is more than that of helping a male complainant, that is, that is going an extra mile in ensuring that the complaint is resolved possibly much quicker and if it was a female complainant. If it was a male complainant, rather, sorry. Thank you for the encouraging messages of strength and resilience 
to both Honorable Chizuma and Honorable Russia, you express the barriers of patriarchy and how those could be overcome. The question is, what is your country's made impossible for you to be appointed in this high office? Is there a need for women leaders to push towards more appointments into the seat or should just be the normal course? What role did the political will play in doing the appointment of the woman ombudsman? Would it help the community more if more women take up this position? Honorable Russia, you will deal with that uh, question for us. The rest colleagues, it is just comments, uh, really appreciating the, the inputs made, the information provided, and, and encouraging that there is more that we need to do as women ombudsmen, we are on the right track. Thank you. I see that there's one more question that has just popped up. Uh, actually two. To all the ombudsmen is female in position of leadership, how do your excellencies contribute to female empowerment in leadership? I would ask Honorable Russia to deal with that. As female leaders, what advice would you give other females who intend in the future to be in a position of leadership in African society? Honorable Chisuma, you will kindly deal with that question. That is all so far. DPP, would you like me to commence with the question you directed to me? That was the first question. Okay. Um, there was a particular question then, is Ombudsman International, um, and I was thinking it would be useful to address both the, both the concept and the terminology. Um, as our DPP indicated, the, the term is an international one. Um, it is, and it is one in, in South Africa, for instance, we've adopted the concept of public protector. But effectively, the concept of an Ombudsman or a public protector in our instance is any, it's an official who's appointed to investigate individual complaints. So the concept of a, of a complaints um, directorate or an ombudsman or a public protector is an official entity that can investigate complaints. This can be either directed within an internal institution. So a group such as the World Bank Group would set up its own compliance or investigate office that would receive complaints. Or, but primarily it's used in the public authority, the public sector. So an individual municipality, so Eteguini municipality in Durban here, for instance, has an, an investigative unit, an ombuds office. So an individual municipality can have a complaints directorate. Um, so the practice is used internationally. Um, and we're, we're addressing here for those of you who are not familiar with AOC and the entity, this is a network of ombudsmen from the African continent. And so we're in conversation today with ombudsmen from countries across our continent who've been engaging with this issue. I hope that helps. Thank you. I've moved to you, Honorable Russia, to please commence with your responses. Honorable Russia, would you kindly unmute? Muito obrigada. Thank you very much. Julgo que a pergunta que que vou responder é. I think that the question that I will be answering está relacionada com a posição da mulher, como a posição das mulheres motivadas motivam outras mulheres para posições de liderança. Is related to how the position of a good woman may motivate other women towards leadership. 
julgo ser esta questão. Eu acho que esta é a pergunta. A pergunta é relacionada a isso. Ou ainda tem uma outra que é o provedor de justiça. Ou é o provedor de Tem de ser sempre um macho. E como podemos sair do patriarcado se há algum papel político para a nomeação de uma mulher como provedora de justiça? Ou é o provedor de justiça? Ou é o provedor de justiça? Ou é o provedor de justiça? Ou é o Quanto à pergunta relacionada com. Se o produto de justiça deve ser sempre um macho e como sair do patriarcado, se há algum papel político na nomeação? Com relação à pergunta sobre o patriarcado e o e como do patriarcado? De mulher produtora de justiça? Eu julgo que é um pouco difícil de responder, mas. Tricky to answer this question. Em Angola, é, é a segunda mulher que é provedora de justiça adulta. Em Angola, I am the second deputy ombudswoman. E o provedor de justiça é um homem. And the ombudsman is a, a man. E julgamos que de facto ainda esta questão de subordinação do patriarcado. And I think that we are still within the theme of subordination. Dificilmente, because it is very difficult. Poderia ser o inverso. To be the other way around. Aliás, vemos agora em relação às finanças. And we may also see even now with relations to finances. Ao longo de, de mais de 40 anos que Angola é independente. Uh, on, on our 40 years of independence in Angola. Sempre foram homens a liderar o Ministério das Finanças. There was always a man leading the Department of Finance, the Ministry of Finance. De modo que vamos continuar a lutar para que um dia haja uma professora de justiça mulher. Uh, so with this we, we, we may continue to fight so that one day we'll have a, an ombudswoman. Desde que, desde que ela tenha competência. As long as he's capable. Mas como é um cargo de eleição, But, uh, as it is a, a position where one is elected, depende da Assembleia Nacional, it depends on the national assembly. não há nenhum concurso, the, there is no, uh, the public service do not advertise for this post. Acho que será um pouco mais difícil. É necessário mesmo que haja o reconhecimento das entidades, da, do, do Presidente da Assembleia Nacional, das entidades que indicam o Provedor de Justiça e o, e, e, e o adjunto. Eu acho que ainda vai ser um pouco mais difícil. É muito importante que nós tenhamos a consciência do Chairperson da Assembleia Nacional e do Governo government. Mas pela sensibilidade que as mulheres têm para tratar das questões relacionadas com os direitos humanos, we need to take it to the awareness that they should recognize ladies as capable to lead. Deveria de facto as mulheres desempenharem esse cargo. Uh, it should at some stage be women leading up or having these these positions. O que não quer dizer que os homens também não têm essa sensibilidade. Well, I'm not saying that men are not capable. Mas ainda é algo relacionado com o patriarcado. But it is related to the patriarchy. Quanto à outra questão, a posição com mulheres motivada para outras mulheres nas funções de liderança, acho que vou deixar que é para a senhora moderadora indicar que vai responder. Well, and I will also, this is my explanation towards the, the A primeira questão, se eu digo, não pode depender de nós. The first question uh, would not depend on us. Não depende das mulheres. It does not depend on the woman. Temos que continuar a mostrar trabalho. Uh, we should uh, carry on showing work. Muito obrigado. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Obrigado. I now hand over to Honorable Martha to respond to the second set of questions. Okay. Um, thank you, DPP. Um, thank you, DPP. Um, I, I think I only managed to, to, to get hold of two questions. So if there's anything that I've I might have missed you, you'll have to remind me. So the first question was, what advice do you give to other females in the future to be in position of leadership in Africa? Um, I, I think, look, um, my usual response to this kind of a question is really there's nothing special about me um, as, as an ombudsman. And I've, I've had to go through the same challenges that women or younger women go through uh, in the context within which we operate, which largely is what we've been talking about, uh, to be more of a patriarchal uh, context. But look, I think one thing that I've always um, held on to are the basic things, work hard, okay, persevere through. But let me one thing that I can add from my experience in the office in the past five years is um, to find your niche as, as to find your niche as a human being. Okay, so you need to find who you are as a human being. Try to be as authentic and a genuine person as you can be, and then see how you can use that um, within the how you can use that to, 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 to discharge your function. So there are always gaps within any institution, within any society, within any, uh, within all the, the organizations. There, you find that there are always gaps within those organizations. So this is, I think, what I did. I, I, I studied the institution, I studied the political or the casual context within which the Ombudsman Institution in Malawi operates within and then identified what gaps are there and then looked within myself and said, how can I fill those gaps? And because of that, it, 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 it made me to be relevant to the institution. It made me, the, the institution relevant to the society. And that's how I believe the Ombudsman uh, became, like in Malawi, is one of those institutions that are always looked upon in a very positive light. And this has happened at the time when I, I am the ombudsman um, like for the past five years. And it all goes back to, I think, persistence in my work, giving it all that I have, but also bringing a certain flavor to the position that probably was not there. So there is really nothing special, nothing peculiar or nothing out of this world that I would advise that little girl uh, in a particular village as to what she needs to do to, to become ombudsman is simply work hard. Work hard, um, be as, to, to, to the best of your ability, be a person of, of integrity, be a genuine and authentic human being. Because those are the things that usually lack in our societies and when you bring that um, into the fall, it, it does bring change um, uh, in, in whatever it is that you are, you are leading, like in, in our context, uh, the Ombudsman Institution. So the next question, I think, is what made it possible for you to become Ombudsman? So for me, for us in Malawi here, the Ombudsman is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a legislature uh, position. What I mean by that is that there's no executive influence in the appointment of the Ombudsman. It, 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 it is with the, uh, the, the, the legislature, the parliament, and it's through, it's through the competitive process. So basically they actually flag out a, an advert for the position whenever it falls vacant. And in this case, when it did fall vacant in 2015, I applied and uh, I went through the interviews, the normal interviews, and then yeah, later on I was appointed. So there's no executive influence in the appointment. The whole process starts and ends in the, um, um, in the, 
in, in parliament, the president of this country is simply informed um, uh, of, of who has been appointed, but he has got no say at all. And then that means that if I am to be removed, I can also only be removed uh, by parliament. Um, is there any need for women leaders to push towards more appointments into this seat, or should it be a normal course? Um, yes and no. Um, for me, yes, because I think there has to be... I came on to be ombudsman not because of um, some policy to have an, a, a female ombudsman. I came through a, a competitive um, uh, uh, process, but I think there has to be some deliberate policy in most of these institutions to make sure that the, the headship of that institution or the, the, the leadership of that institution it goes to women because it does make a, a difference. It does make a difference when we have a woman um, in position for, for the reasons I think that we, I have explained um, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my presentation that just speak for the fact of being a woman, you bring a certain flavor to the platform, the emotions that you have, the empathy that you have as a woman, to see to it that if the complainant that is before you was you, how would you want to be assisted? That is something that it's easier for women to, 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 to feel than, than, than a man. And I have to be careful, I'm not being general, but I'm simply saying I believe that it's easier for a woman to feel empathy than a man because naturally we are home builders, we are society, um, uh, 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 we are society builders. We, we, women build, all right? We are not as destructive. We, we, we are more on the softer side of things. So, and that's what our society needs is to build, not to break. So, yes, I think um, it would be more helpful if women would take more leadership position in the country. I mean, there are some things that we see in the world that probably we don't think through much about it. I was reading a certain article about how different countries have handled the COVID-19 pandemic. And you could see that in most countries where the leadership is with the women, the way the coronavirus pandemic has been handled has been brilliant. The, the rates of transmission um, and even the death rate has been significantly lower than in, in, the, in, in the other countries where the leadership um, uh, is that of men. So these are things that they are right in our face. And the explanation probably that you can give to them is that there's something about the women leaders in these countries that made it possible for that kind of situation to arise. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do believe that there has to be deliberate policy to have more women um, in, in leadership positions. DPP, unless I've forgotten an, a, a question, maybe you can bring that to my attention. Thank you, Honorable Martha. Um, any other questions that would not have been answered? I see that there are questions on the chat icon. We will kindly request um, the team at AOC to please place those responses onto our website. And please, participants, remember that the presentations will also be posted on the AOC IOMA website, which has been detailed on the group icon. It is evident that as women ombuds, we most definitely understand the material conditions that women face in society outside of the law itself, as patriarchy continues to pose the most significant barrier to women in any sphere and corner of life. We obviously need to do more. We need to realize the Maputo Protocol of 2003. We need to realize the Beijing protocol within our spaces to ensure that a guaranteed quality of service delivery and good governance to the betterment of, of the life of a woman in the family, first of all, we need to eradicate domestic violence and society at large. Women should not become victims of crimes for instance, whilst going to fetch wood and water as far as 10 kilometers away from their homes, as it's evident in most of our African countries. 
women should not, under our leadership, be going to get wood and water, carrying babies on their back. We should realize full emancipation of women, eradicate the status quo until women are freed from carrying the wood bucket and babies on their back. It is our duty as women ombuds family to entrench this commitment because it is us who know how heavy women in our communities are carrying because we are carrying just as much. It might not be literally wood bucket of water and babies, but the stereotypes are still just as heavy. With that said, I would like to thank the following. Our panelists for the insights that they've provided, the path that they've shown us that we've been through, that we are still going through. Thank you so much for that visionary leadership. Our participants, thank you so much for gracing this event. Thank you for your comments and your questions. And please remember that the IOC IOMA website has been posted on the chat group for any other information that you might require. To the IOC team, thank you so much colleagues for putting this beautiful event together. Thank you for the hard work, Frankie and the rest of the team. To UKZN, which is my career and educational home, Thank you so much for hosting AOC. Thank you so much for your progressive and your knowledge that you plant each and every day. Under the leadership of Professor Reddy, whom I love and know, she was my lecturer at the UDW campus. She is a fighter for women's rights. She used to fight for us as female law students. I remember the one time I was assaulted by a fellow student refusing to be led by me in the Law Student Council. Professor Reddy took up that case and took it for disciplinary hearing. Professor Reddy is also the reason for who I am. She identified me as having a strength to be a prosecutor and she said, that would be the career path I would recommend you to take. Indeed, I took up the career path of being a prosecutor. And I must say, I am who I am because of people like her who nurture young women, who realize the talent in young women and assist them to grow. UKZN Law School is indeed in safe hands. Thank you so much to the founding team of IOC under the leadership then of, of Professor, now Professor Madonsela. We continue to be inspired by Professor Madonsela, not only by the legacy that she's left for us, particularly in the Public Protector South Africa, but in the footprint that she continues to create, not only in the country, the continent and the globe. Her vigor is an inspiration to all of us. And lastly, I would like to thank the IOC Ayoma team under the leadership of Advocate Busisiwe Mkwebane, my dear sister, your strength, your compassion for the emancipation of poor people, particularly women, is going to take us a long way. And thank you, thank you, Abrugado.